Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here for another great video from my hometown, Lehman High School. Had some crazy times here I'm going to talk about right now. First, before I get started, make sure you check us out on Patreon, member programs, YouTube member programs. Check it all out. You can find it all in the links right below. First of all, this is the field. We, first of all, didn't have that nice field back then. The Lehman Lions are a very, very uh, good football team in the Bronx and in New York City, actually. And we also had some professional athletes come right out of this school. Bobby Bonilla, the big uh, baseball player for the New York Mets, and uh, Alex Ramos, the Olympic boxer, and, and others. So this is Lehman. Now we're gonna come talk. I used to walk this whole way to the trains. That's Westchester Square. Now there's a bus, there's two bus stops. There's one over there or there. You can get off either one. We used to like to get off that one because it was an OTB, off-track betting. So we would go there, and there was a pizza shop there. So we used to go. I used to cut class all the time. What school? I was bad, and don't do that out there if you're watching this video. Just because I did it, don't do it. I used to cut class, and I'm gonna show you where. Down here on the bottom one I'm gonna show you, they had shop class. Well, back when I was younger, they used to chain the doors closed. Fucking chain the doors closed. Think of that. That's what they did. So what we used to do is find the one door they weren't allowed to chain. And here is shop class. Now I'm gonna show you right here. See right down there? We used to come out here, come up here, and duck out of school. And all of this. Now you can see the field better from here too. See, we had a big track going around it. We didn't have that nice field like you see it now, but it was a, it was a beautiful field. Uh, but it was a grass field, it was a legit field, it wasn't this artificial turf. Now, this school, Lehman High School, Herbert H. Lehman High School, 5,000 students. Think of that, 5,000 students. Shop class was on the bottom, so that's where I was. Now, as I'm going, I'm gonna show you who's to come up here. I ended up starting a riot when I was here that the horseback cops came. Horseback cops come. Because I was the crazy kid who used to come to school with an eight pack of beer. Some of you guys who are a little older will remember what an eight pack is. Your little nips, they used to call them. I used to come to school with a nips beer. What a fucking kid I was, huh? Really going places, huh? I was, trust me, stay in school, do the right thing. Now, before this was even what it is now. I used to take, we, we took a kid on the other side of the building. Now, these are all the classrooms that, that come out. Is school out? Oh, it must be done. We hung a kid over the highway by his ankles. We held him over the fucking highway. What morons build a fucking high school over a fucking, not only that, why don't you breathe all that fucking goddamn the gas and the trucks and everything coming into it. Are they crazy? That's the Bronx. I didn't hate school. I just never went to school. Uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't something I did. I mean, it was, I, I learned more on the streets. I was very good at math. I happened to be lucky that I was intelligent enough that I could take a piece of loose leaf to school and literally pass the test with one day. I you know, have that kind of brain. It's whatever it is. I was very lucky to be able to pass math or anything I wanted. So I did all that, but then at the end, I didn't know it. I never even got my, I did not graduate from this school. I went to this school. And matter of fact, they were talking about, it's funny, Dougie Marone was on a radio show and they were talking about famous people that come out of Lehman High School and, and they mentioned my name, the show. And Dougie goes, oh yeah, I know Larry. He goes, I know Larry real good. And I, he kind of laughed. And uh, so Dougie, you know, went here as well. But uh, it made me laugh, because they're saying the guys who come out of here, I didn't graduate. I ended up getting my GED and then my college. But I ended up getting my GED when I was in the service. Back then, you didn't even need a high school diploma to get in the service. It was just the way it was. I mean, you know, now it is, look at it. But this is some good memories. Yeah, so this is the backside of Lehman High School. This is the actual the auditorium, and I spoke here and you're gonna see some footage of that as well. But what's really cool about this place right here 
When I went to the school, I was a year ahead of my sister, two years ahead of my sister, and uh, my little sister Donna. So she gets here, she was getting picked on by a bunch of girls. I came over, shut that shit right down. I knew it. I was the crazy kid in school. Kids knew it, and that was, you know, not bad, bad, but they knew it. And I, I said, leave that bitch. That's my sister, man. And she, she used to tell the story. She's since passed, but she used to tell the story how my big brother come save me. And the last time I was here, when I spoke at this school, and it was a while ago, and I'm gonna try to contact the guy maybe for tomorrow. But anyway, when I spoke at this school. I was in that diner with the, with the uh, dean, who's a friend of mine. I grew up with him. His name is James McSherry. And we were in the diner with Teresa, me, and Teresa's a teacher. She works for me now. And she was a teacher in Florida. So this is a normal school day. There's 100 people out here. A fight breaks out right here. They're going at it. Teresa goes, oh my god, oh my god, there's a fight. McSherry and I just go, okay, so what? He goes, I'll see him later. He, he, he didn't even move, didn't get up, didn't care. I mean, because it happens every day here. This is the Bronx. You, know, you got 5,000 students. Think of that. And when I went here, it was pretty much busing. If you remember, busing happened in the 70s. So it was just a little after the busing. So it was, it was an integrated. You had kids from all over coming here. And it, it just was our school, Herbert H. Lee. But this area, but that diner, you want to talk fun. I used to go into that diner every day, and we used to read the sports section of the paper, figure out who we were going to gamble on, who were betting. That's what our schoolwork was. Me and Ronnie, which you're going to see a video on Ronnie. Ronnie's a great guy, great character. And uh, I know Ronnie since I was a little kid. We used to play catch and pitch and catch in his yard in the Bronx over there in Locust Point, where I showed you earlier. But Ronnie and I used to come to this, he'll tell you, he remembers the story, he's great. And we'd be figuring out who to gamble on and, and well, who, how to get the money and who we owed the bookie. Oh shit, we had a phone number. It was, it was so different back in our day. Now everything's online, everything's the internet, and everything's uh, pretty much legal. Back when we were around, it wasn't. It wasn't legal, things weren't legal. So this is Lehman High School at its best. We're going to IS-192, my middle school. And this is where, this is where I went from when I got kicked out of fucking the Catholic school. This is my old school. This is my first school after going to St. Francis de Chantel. This is IS-192, Intermediate School 192. And this is where I went from 7th seventh, seventh and 8th grade, or I think it's 6th, 7th, 8th, 7th and 8th grade. But look at this. This is, man, if I went in there, it'd probably fucking arrest me. You know, they'd think I'm some fucking pervert going in. But <laughs> this is a Bronx school. This is it, baby. Man, I was uh, 12, 13. Yeah, I was making money. I was already bookmaking. I was in, in the Bronx, I was going home. All I cared about was going home, racing home to see my dad and we'd go to the bar, we'd go to Triangle Bar, which we're gonna go there. And, and I would get the tickets and, and hand them out to the whole neighborhood. And they'd be betting a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, and I'm making money. I'm getting 25 cents for every dollar I brought in. So when I brought in $500, I was making $125. Think of that. That's a fucking kid in 1973. Did the other kids in the class know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, because you fucking, yeah, you'd get your money from them. Fuck you. Give me a dollar. You want to bet? Dollar. Here. Everybody, you want to come up with a dollar. But a dollar was a big deal back then. You know, you, you walked around, you had change in your pocket. It wasn't like it is today when you had a lot of money. But it, kids today, like, they look at, oh, I need, I need $25 for a game. Are you fucking crazy? If I asked my dad for $25 for a game, I'd have got fucking knocked across the room. $25 for a game. I didn't have sneakers. You know, it was it was rough times back then. My mom went and work. My dad gets laid off. I was playing basketball. Michael K will remember that. I was playing basketball in slippers, bedroom slippers, because I didn't have sneakers. And we couldn't afford sneakers. It was we couldn't even get the dollar kit. Dollar kid shoes, you know what I mean? It was just times are different. $25 for a game. 
I'm fucking like, are you fucking kidding? My my grandkids, uh, I need, you know, uh, Teresa's grandkids. Oh yeah, I'm saving up for a game, it's $50. $50 for a game? Are you fucking off your rocker? $50, fucking $50. I'd have fucking started running old neighborhood. I'd have fucking loan shark the money to other kids. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't do that. But this is it, Randall Avenue, all the way down to Schley and stuff like that. Wow. This is the handball court, Mr. Knapp, which we're gonna try to see. His, the kid Joey Knapp was a little younger than us. We used to beat him up as a kid. And Mr. Knapp was a uh, telephone worker. He worked for uh, Ma Bell, they called it, or whatever it was. He used to come play handball, real handball. He was a hell of a handball player. So he used to come to this handball court right here. Look at these basketball courts. See, when I grew up, they didn't have this kind of nice glass backboards. We had steel backboards and chain nets. But look at this. They still don't want your ass in here. And look at how nice it is. I mean, think, look at this. This is beautiful. I mean, you know, things change in, holy shit, 40 years. More. 45 years. Is that crazy? 45 years. I thought I'd be dead. I never thought I'd live to 50. Okay, this is Throg's Neck Little League. And I played baseball here. My brother was so good, and you've seen him in videos, everybody. My brother was so good at baseball, he could have been a major league player, but he was drinking too much, and we partied too much back in those days. He, my brother, actually went to the World Series in the Little League all the way to Pennsylvania, where they played a World Series. He went there. He was a pitcher, and he was an unbelievable arm. He could throw a ball 90 miles an hour, my son, my brother. And he was good. I could hit him. I was one of the only guys who could hit him. And when we played, him and I won the stickball championship around here uh, and fast pitch because he'd strike everybody out and I, I was a good hitter. But we played Little League here. This Little League was the first Little League in all of New York to have lights. To have lights. And that was back in 50 years ago. Yes, 50 years ago this place had lights. And they were put up. And I played on Roy's Toyland was one of the teams. And I got a picture. I'm going to put it up right now, right here. I'm going to put up a picture of Roy's Toyland. And that's the, 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 the Little League field. And here, this whole place. Now, what we used to do here, everybody, was we used to have uh, the always, every weekend, it was a big deal. My mom, pop would be over along the other side, and they'd have their chairs out. The, you know, the little lawn chairs, and they'd all be rooting. Everybody's rooting for their kids. And they always had a hot dog man. I used to love the hot dogs with sauerkraut and the, the red onions, the, the sauce onions. That's New York, man. You get it. You say, give me a hot dog with the works. Man, now I eat five or six of them at a time. I'm such a fat fuck. But the, uh, this, this is new. This building here is new. We didn't have a nice building like that. I don't know how new, uh, but it wasn't here when I was here, obviously. Uh, but look how nice this place is. And we're gonna, oh my God, it's there. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's the WAP shop. I know that's, uh, that, that shouldn't say, that's what we used to call it, the WAP shop. There was WAPs, and what, what WAP is, is uh, actually WAP is a derogatory statement which you don't use, but we used to call it the WAP shop back in the day. And WAP means without papers. When the Italians came over here, they were called WAPs because they came without papers and they called them a WAP. So that store in the corner, way down there, we'll go there, was the WAP shop and we used to buy beer. I remember buying a quart of beer for 69 cents. And we'd ask an older kid, you know, 18 to go get us the beer, go get us the beer or somebody and they'd get it to us. Everybody, we had no problem getting the beer. Now, as we're looking here, I want you to look this way. This is the school I went to. It's called St. Francis de Chantel. This is where I got kicked out of. I remember this well. This is the entrance. And when my dad come and pick me up after uh, getting kicked out, well, I didn't get kicked out. They asked us not to come back at the end of that year. We weren't allowed to re-sign up. I came out there, because when you go in that door, on the left is the principal's office. And this is, let's try to go in. I guess they can't just walk in schools anymore. Yeah, I, I did forget that. You can't go into a school. 
just walk in. His two guys is walking in. But anyway, so when I got up, Scott Gariola lived up that way, and I think somebody else, I forget his name, and he, they were crying when their dad picked them up. My dad, I had to wait till the end of the day. My dad was a construction worker. And I'll tell you what, boy, when he come in, I thought I was going to get my ass kicked, but I didn't. But it, it was kind of funny, you know, coming here and sitting on the bench in there waiting and waiting and waiting. And here I got this letter that says, who wants to fuck Mrs. Armolino? She was a lay teacher, hot. At least I thought she was hot, and she probably was. She's probably 30 years old at the time. She probably, wow, she'd be about, fuck, she'd be about 80, 80-something now, at least. The minimum, if she's alive. And then the, and the, the nuns and the stuff. This is where you go. This was the gym, the basketball gym, where we played uh, ball. My sister played on the team and everything. Look at this. I wonder if they're open. Founded in 1930. This is the school I went to until I got kicked out. They got my, my sister and I kicked out. My, my other family already graduated. Me? Nope. I gotta be the bad kid. After the sixth year, I got put the IS-192. This is the bridge. Now, right back then, there was no wall. There was no wall, you just, these were all trees, there were heavy trees in here. And we used to build forts in here and hang out here. We even made a fort where we tapped into the light pole on the fucking bridge to get electric in our fort. That's how crazy we were. But there was none. So you, we used to, back in the 70s, people don't know what streaking is. Streaking is when you take your clothes off and you run around naked. And it's called, do the, there was actually a song, Do the Streak or something like that. Well, anyway, here we are, about 13 years old. Little kids with little peekies, little peckers. And we fucking go streaking, because the older kids streak. But well, we put our clothes over here, and we took all our clothes off, and we fucking go streak. And you used to go streak along the bridge, because the cars would be honking, and we'd run across the bridge in traffic. Fucking, you know, cars come, you wait for you, you run, and you're naked, you little fucking ass, white ass, little pecker, fucking sick and running around. So we'd be running around naked. So we come back to get our clothes, and the older kids took our clothes. We got no fucking clothes, nothing. Now we're saying, what the fuck are we gonna do? How are we gonna get home? Everybody knows us over here. We're fucking over here where we did streaking. Everybody knows you, everybody. Oh shit, now we got no fucking clothes. There were four of us. What are we gonna fucking do? So we wait, we wait, we wait. And it was in the winter time, because it was a little cool. But we fucking waited because it got dark early. So when it got dark, we snuck to my house over there and we opened the garage. And in my house, we, the laundry room was on, in the in the cellar. So we went there and we all got shorts and put our shorts on and fucking got a shirt and, put, and we got home. They were laughing, the old kids, the older crew were laughing their asses off. Cause we thought we were cool. We would drink and party, think we were big shots. They're old, they were real drinkers and partiers and shit. We were the young kids, up and coming drinkers and partiers and shit. So when they did something, we did it.